Hey guys, Etan Sider from Sun Bros, and today I'm really excited to be bringing you guys our first build video in a very long time. It's probably been at least six months. Um, for those of you who weren't aware, I had a back injury that I was recovering from, and just been really busy with life and trying to catch up with things um, and all that kind of stuff. So this is our first how to build. This is actually our first video in a long time, but it's our first how to build video in quite a while. And today we're going to be doing it on Darcy. Darcy is a mage control. Um, you guys can see on the right side, Darcy's ability damage is all the way maxed out. Very high damage, uh, very high potential mage. And we're going to take a look at Darcy's abilities, kind of get an idea of what he's capable of, what he can do in order to best figure out how to build him and, and um, you know, take the best advantage of that toolkit while hiding some of the weaknesses that Darcy brings to the table. All right, Darcy's passive is dimensional force. This is pretty simple. I'm going to kind of <clears throat> sum it up for you. What happens is Darcy... Every time Darcy does an auto attack or a, a hit somebody with an ability, um, he gets dimensional energy. And um, when he gets the full energy, he enters another dimension for eight seconds and it immediately restores 20% of his lost mana. Um, and it also uh, totally brings back the cooldowns of dimensional walk and dimensional cube, so they're instantly available. Uh, they're immediately reset, rather. And then um, he also gains 20% movement speed while he's in the other dimension. And his next dimensional walk or dimensional cue will be enhanced, and we'll discuss what those enhancements are under those abilities. So <clears throat> he gets some 20% of his missing mana back, gets movement speed, and he gets enhanced attacks. Okay, so dimensional walk. Darcy enters a different dimension for one and a half seconds, during which he cannot be targeted, is immune to control effects, his movement speed is increased by 20%, and he takes slightly uh, he takes significantly less damage. So for one and a half seconds, he can't be targeted. He's immune to all crowd control effects, and he takes uh, any movement speed buff of 20%, and he takes in significantly less damage. Um, so remember, cannot be targeted doesn't mean he can't be attacked. It means he can't be targeted with auto attacks or targeted abilities. He could still be hit by area effect abilities or any aimed abilities. So for example, <clears throat> if uh, Slims threw a spear out, which is an aimed ability, his first ability, and it hit Darcy, it, would, it wouldn't stun him uh, but it could hit him, and it could do some damage. It obviously would be less damage, but it but it wouldn't stun, but it would still hit, which is the important part. So he can still be hit by abilities. He just cannot be um, targeted. After using this ability, his next normal attack is um, within five seconds is enhanced and with a longer range and deals additional 330 base, and that goes up to 730 at level six, um, with a 50% AP scaling. Uh, as well as reduces target movement speed by 60%. So it's a huge damage dealer, and <clears throat> it does a 60% slow. So now we're gonna actually be looking at that because we um that's one of the things that we're gonna want to um, accentuate on Darcy, especially early in the in the game. And we're gonna be doing that throughout our build. Uh, additionally, attacking or using abilities um, while he's in the different dimension will cancel the effect immediately. So. If you use an ability or attack during the one and a half seconds in which you're not targetable and immune to crack control and all that kind of stuff, you will immediately jump out of it. So keep that in mind. And then the enhanced version of Dimensional Walk gives his movement speed increase from 20 to 40%. And then his, and then he gets health back. He gets 100 base. Um, and then it goes up to 200 at level 6. And then 30% of his AP uh, plus 10% of his lost HP. So he can actually heal quite a bit. Um, and it just makes it a really good uh, auto attack after using that ability. Okay, uh, then we're going to be looking at a second ability, Dimensional Cube. Darcy summons a Dimensional Cube at the target area. After 1.25 seconds, the cube explodes and deals 800, and that scales up all the way to 1200 level 6, plus 185% of his ability power. And the enhanced version is the range of the cube, so the diameter of the cube is larger, and Darcy gains 10 energy for each enemy hit. Okay, then we are... Okay, so now we're kind of moving in the second ability. We're going to move on to the ultimate dimensional portal. Darcy opens a portal in the targeted area, dealing 100, and that goes up to 200 uh, at level 3, plus 40% of the AP, so 40% AP scaling, to enemies within the area. So it's a kind of small damage to people who get hit when it immediately gets casted. And then it marks their locations. After two seconds, marked enemies are teleported right back to their original locations and stunned for a short period of time. Uh, so this is actually the key to, to to Darcy's kind of wombo combo or his combination of abilities that he uses is the, the the ultimate. Within six seconds of using this ability, Darcy can actually then teleport into the portal himself, trigger an explosion that deals 200, scaling all the way to 500 at level 3, plus 100% of AP magic damage. 
Um, so it's 100% AP scaling. The cooldown of the Dimensional Cube is all is immediately res reset upon using this ability. Dimensional Cube being the second uh, ability. So kind of the common <clears throat> combo that people use is they pop the ultimate, they get their people marked, they do a little bit of damage, they get marked, remember after two seconds, they're teleported back. So what you do is you launch the cube, remember the cube takes 1.25 seconds to explode. So about after about a second, you put the cube where they're gonna be teleported back to, and then when they're teleported back, you actually hit your ultimate again, and you teleport into that, and then cause the big explosion. Um, that combo is really nasty, and then if you don't kill them, you can always just hit your dimensional walk, get one and a half seconds of not being able to be crowd controlled, a lot less damage, and then not being able to be targeted to just walk right out of it. Um, but that damage is really nasty and should cause most squishies especially to die. All right, so now let's go into the equipment page and take a look at how we want to build Darcy. Now, there's, we're going to give you guys two builds. They're almost identical, but the, one distinction. One's a jungle build, and one is a mid lane build. Um, so obviously Darcy's a mage. She's going to get played in mid lane, but... Darcy's also a phenomenal jungler. Um, so now when we talk about jungling, we discuss the four basic necessities that, you know, the four qualifications that a jungler must meet in order to really be a decent jungler. Number one is the ability to farm the jungle fast enough to be able to upkeep top tier gold uh, lead. So um, after all the nerf stunts, the jungle and the amount of gold you can get from jungle monsters, being number one in the jungle isn't necessary anymore because they've really tried to force the marksman to get number one by adding gold to that lane and taking it away from the jungle but you should generally be top two or three on your team especially or top two or three in the game um as the jungler so you want to make sure that your hero can farm fast enough in order to upkeep a top level of gold darcy checks that box he's got a, phenom a phenomenal jungle clear not only early game but mid and late game as well um, number two is gank ability now what this means is not the ability to go into somebody's lane and kill somebody and get out, right? Gank ability is the ability to make a difference, a positive difference for that person in that lane when you when you go in and gank. Now that can be a different a bunch of different ways. It could be forcing that person to use their flicker so that for 90 seconds their your teammate knows they don't have flicker up. It could mean killing that person. It could mean getting really low on health, having them back, giving your guy time for free farm and pushing on tower. Um, now, the two ways that you really achieve this are number one, that you ha are like an assassin. You have massive burst damage. You can jump in and kill somebody before they can get out. Number two, it's that you're able to control, use your crowd control effects in order to control that person uh, to help the person in lane kill them and get some extra gold or a combination of those two things. You essentially have to be able to provide either crowd control or damage enough to be able to make a difference in that lane when ganking. And uh, ironically, Darcy actually checks both. He can do enough damage to kill people in lane, and he can also provide enough crowd control to help the laner do the damage necessary to kind of finish that off. So that actually works out really well for Darcy. Check box number two off. Number three is the ability to secure Dragon and Dark Slayer. Um, and Darcy's very good at that. And you know, that is a myriad of different things. The, the, how fast they can knock those down. Can they sustain through some of the damage that those guys are gonna do? And can you, uh, at least to some degree help um, zone enemies out while you secure it and, and all those things. And Darcy also checks those boxes off. Uh, and then last but not least, but Darcy's one of Darcy's main jobs is to be able to help push lanes out, knock down towers, and help um, push multiple lanes out. So it's kind of, a, you need a, a good wave clear. You gotta be able to also hit towers quickly um, or at least assist your lane mates in doing that at a at effective level and efficient level. So Darcy actually has a phenomenal Wave clear and a phenomenal tower killing ability because the enhanced auto attack damage on his first ability um, causes him to do a lot of damage to, to towers and we're only going to enhance that at the build. Now we're going to show you the jungle build because I think overall Darcy's most effective in the jungle but we're also going to give you a mid lane build you can use um, in case you are playing him there. So we're going to be starting of course with the jungle item and it's going to be Loki's Curse, the main jungle item. Now the Loki's Curse is going to give him 120 ability power. 10% cooldown reduction, which is always useful, especially on Darcy as his abilities are such high damage. And then <clears throat> the first unique uh, passive is Curse Power. After using an ability, the next normal attack deals additional magic damage equal to 35% of the attack damage plus 45% of the ability power. Now, that's important. Why? Because it's going to enhance Darcy's first ability. Remember, uh, the after you use his first ability, the next auto attack is super enhanced. Now, this is going to make it even stronger. Um, 
and we're gonna discuss what kind of damage that can possibly output in a second. And we're gonna keep going. So, and then remember the unique passive seek and destroy. You gain six ability power up to thirty sacks. So um, that's a massive chunk also, and that's gonna be 180. So uh, Loki's Curse will actually go all the way up to 300 ability power, which is um, very, very good. And um, so not only does it have a lot of ability power, it has cooldown reduction, and it has the ability to enhance the auto attacks across the board. This item is great for Darcy. Okay, next we're going boots, and now I'm gonna give you two options. The builds that we're going to give you for mid and for jungle are going to end up getting you 40% cooldown reduction. So you don't need to build cooldown reduction, but having cooldown reduction early is very nice to have when you're ganking and when you're clearing your jungle. So you're welcome to take flashy boots if you'd like, but the long term and the best one to be able to take is actually the enchanted kicks. That magic pierce early game is a big difference maker in your ability to gank, your ability to, it does help you farm faster and help you secure, of course, the objectives. Um, so Enchanted Kicks is my suggestion, but you're willing to take Flashy Boots. That gives you 25% cooldown reduction right off the bat and makes uh, makes him a lot more effective. Then we're going back to the Magic Tree and we're going to be taking, of course, one of my favorite combos in the game, the Loki's Curse and the Apocalypse combinations. Why are we taking these together? Because Apocalypse is going to give you 200 ability power, 10% more cooldown reduction. So see, at this point, you have 20% already, even with the Enchanted Kicks, right? Then it has the passive... Um, elemental power, which what is that is going to do is the same thing that we're going to get from Loki's Curse. After using an ability, the next normal attack deals additional damage equal to 30% of the attack damage and 80% of the ability power. Now, when we discuss both these items together, whoops, um, let me go back here and get that pulled up. So when we discuss those items together, what we're going to get is we're going to get a total of 125% of the ability power. So now, we're going to be finishing, so let me show you. This is a 45 ability power, and Apocalypse is 80% ability power. So we're going to get 120% of our ability power is going to hit. And the cooldown is only two seconds on both. So um, you, every time you hit your first ability, your enhanced auto is going to have the 125% extra ability power. So let's do a little quick math. You're going to finish this build with about 1,600 ability power, okay? Um, so pretty, pretty good. Um, 1600 ability power and let's go back and look at the kit real quick so the the scaling on the extra uh the attack is 50 percent so you're gonna do 50 percent extra damage on the scaling okay so keep that in mind then at plus 330 so we're actually go up to 730 so at late game we're looking at seven let me pull up the calculator so we get you guys exact numbers you're going to be looking at 730 baseline and then you're going to get 50 percent so 800 so now you're at 1530 um, just from the ability in and of itself. Now we add 125% extra. So 125% of, let's see, 1,600 times 125%, uh, so 1.25, is going to give us a nice cool 2,000. Plus, we, remember, we already had the 1550, 1530. So now we're actually at 3530 on the damage after... And I don't know, now that doesn't end there. He also has his regular physical damage that he does as a, just somebody who's auto attacking, which is probably gonna be somewhere in the 250, and let's just say 250, just for number, let's say 270 for number's sake. That puts it at 3,800, and we're still not done because he will have some just standard baseline attack damage, and we're gonna be able to get 30% from this, and 45% of this, so we're gonna get 65% of that. Let's just say it's like 300, um, so we're looking at getting right around four, it's rough estimate, not exact numbers, right around 4,000 damage, unmitigated, uh, obviously bef before you're talking about magic defense, magic resistance, and all that kind of stuff, but unmitigated, that first ability is going to give you an auto attack that's going to hit for about 4,000 damage, which is really, really solid um, and super, super helpful. So early game, we're really focusing on that. Not that the other stuff isn't great, but the... The wombo combo of the ultimate and the cube comes into effect much more uh, useful and fervently later in the game when you're doing team fights. Now, it's obviously still useful before, but this is going to own. So we have we already have 500 ability power plus the baseline. So we're already cruising at a pretty nice amount of ability power. Now it's a matter of uh, making sure that everything that we want to do as far as the enhanced auto attack and then the the combo of the of the teleportation and the cube are all dealing a pretty solid amount of damage and that is being taken care of in this now our next item 
is going to be from the magic section also and we're going to end up getting Rhea's blessing okay Rhea's blessing is kind of a I want to say a unique pick here but um I definitely think that it is a unique pick most people probably wouldn't go this direction and the reason why I'm going this direction is pretty simple and I'll tell you why 140 ability power is not you're not blowing anyone's socks off right it's one of the lower ability power items in the game but 10% more cooldown reduction giving us 30% now and then two passives that are just made for guys like Darcy number one life shield gains a shield that absorbs 450 plus 50 per level plus 40 percent of ability power so let's go back to the calculator and see what kind of a shield so when, whenever he falls below 40 percent hp the shield will last for four seconds and has a 75 second cooldown so let's see what kind of shield we could be expecting to get um when that happens so we have a 50 times 15 is of course going to be uh 750 plus we do the 450 base so we're already at 1100 or 1200 rather and we haven't even included 40% of the ability power. 40% of 1600 is obviously going to be 400. So we're talking about 1600 um, shield. 1600 shield is not too shabby, guys. Not too shabby at all. Um, whenever your health falls below 40%. But what makes it awesome, additionally, with this is the other uh, unique passive, Magic Life Shield, 25%. So you're going to be able to um, recuperate 25% of your health on all the magic damage you deal. That also works on the enhanced auto attack from his first ability because all that extra damage from loki's curse from apocalypse and from the ability itself are all going to be magic damage so um one of the main things that gives uh darcy issues is that he does not have a solid escape i mean it, he, he does he has his first ability is a solid escape but if you're using that offensively using it defensively obviously depends but he is somebody who wants to be in the fight because his cooldowns later in the game are really low now let's go back and take a look at that um you know your dimensional walk is going to go down to six and a half seconds then you get 40 percent cooldown reduction and you're going to be getting that down pretty far let's see uh 6.5 times 0.6 you're going to be getting that down to three less than four seconds 3.9 seconds dimensional cube gets down to four seconds and then you get the cooldown reduction on that you're talking about 2.4 seconds and then even the ultimate which gets down to 35 after the cooldown reduction is going to get down to 21 seconds so really solid um abilities are going to come up frequently and as these abilities come up frequently we're going to be able to continually heal ourselves because darcy does a ton of damage and as you deal all that damage and you heal 25 percent of all that damage back to yourself darcy can stay in fights a lot longer and he wants to stay engaged because of those cooldown reductions being so low all right, guys, next we're going to be going on to another magic item. I know it's it's, uh, it's crazy, but we're going to be going on to Staff of Null. The reason we're going with Staff of Null, pretty simple. 180 ability power, 10% cooldown reduction, which gives us a uh, full 40% cooldown reduction now. Um, but, of course, the unique ma uh, passive magic pierce, we just want to be able to kill everyone. I mean, Darcy wants to be able to do damage to everyone. So if you have anyone who's trying to stop you by building magic resistance, or you have any, you know, tanks that are trying to crowd control you or be a problem, take even more. So now we have 75 magic pierce from the boots, and we have 40% from Staff of Null. We're going to be shredding through anyone regardless of how they're building their hero, um, and it's going to be awesome. So... Now we're sitting pretty at five items, and our last item is a real simple one, and that is going to be the Kate's Diadem. Why are we going to Kate's Diadem? Of course, because it gives us 240 ability power, but the unique passive warlock, the ability power that you have gets up by 35%, which is a solid amount. And we're going to take a look exactly at how much that is um, by doing some quick mathematics. Okay, so let's see what we got so far. Pull up the old handy-dandy calculator. All right, guys, and this is how the map is going to break down. Loki's Curse gives us 120 ability power base, but goes up to 300 after 30 stacks, uh, 30 jungle stacks. And we get Apocalypse with 200, because it's 500. And we have 140 for Rhea's Blessing, that puts us at 640. 180 from Staff of Null, that gives us 820. And then 240 from Akate's Diadem, that gives us, um, let's see, 820 to so 1060. And then we find out from our handy dandy calculator that uh 1060 times 1.35 for the extra damage on Hikates, and that's 1431 you add in the ability power you have from your arcana and you're sitting pretty at about right right under 1600 ability power um so like i said right around 1600 ability powers where you're going to end up now this is the jungle build and then we're going to show you real quick the 
lane build. And all that changes is we swap out Loki's Curse for Orb of the Magi, which is going to end up at 280 ability power, but it's also going to have 10% um, cooldown reduction and some of the other things. You have a different passive where you get um, health and mana every, every time you level up. Um, as opposed to the damage added on to the auto attack. But remember, Apocalypse is the main heavy lifter on that because it gives you 80% uh, ability power and Loki's Curse gives you four, uh, 45. But still, I, I would even say I wouldn't even be against building Loki's Curse in lane, although getting to 30 stacks is a lot harder. So it's just up to you on that. But yeah, this is the build. Now let's go ahead and talk about um, Arcana that we're going to be going with. Now I have two options. Um, I go with either... The ability power um, attack speed arcana, which gives us um, a little bit of attack speed. We have 66 ability power, 88 magic pierce. So that's 88 magic pierce on top of the 75 from the boots and on top of 40% from staff of adults. So we have, we have magic pierce for days. 10% um, magic life steal, giving us 35% total and then a little bit of attack speed. Or we can go to the ability power cooldown reduction. Now, obviously, we're getting 40%, but it's a little bit of uh, cooldown reduction extra early. This gives you 90 per ability power as opposed to the 66. And then it gives you 7% cooldown speed, 10% magic life steal, and then 24 magic pierce instead of um, 88. Now, I play with the the AP um, the ability power attack speed build, this one. And this one works out well. What that has is violate which is Ability Power and Magic Pierce, uh, Devour, which is Ability Power and Magic Lifesteal, and then Flurry, which is Magic Pierce and Attack Speed. I think this one gives you the best bang for your buck as far as the most uh, stuff that you would want for him. The, ma the Attack Speed isn't like necessary, but it does help just, you know, 6% faster attack on the auto attacks after the abilities. It's just, it just helps, but mostly it's the Magic Pierce that we're getting and loving, and it helps with the early game clear. It helps doing late game damage, so Solid across the board. And then talent-wise, we're going to be taking um, a couple different things. We're going to be going, obviously, Punish if we're going in the jungle. And if we're not, we're generally going to be taking um, either Heal or you could look at taking something like um, Purify. So if you get crowd controlled, I mean, there's really... Um, punish, Heal is really the main two. You don't really need Flicker because you can hit your first ability and become immune to crowd control. Um, so it's just a matter of like your skill level and where you're at. So you'll be looking at, you know, you could maybe take Disrupt if you're in lane, I don't know. Um, I take Punish and Heal personally. So those are, that is um, our build guys. Let's go ahead and recap for you. We have Loki's Curse, Enchanted Kicks, Apocalypse, Rhea's Blessing, Staff of Null, and Hecate Sidem. And then for the lane build, we switch Loki's Curse out for Over the Magi. Guys, that is our um, Darcy build that gives you incredible damage. It's going to give you 40% cooldown reduction. And of course, it's going to give you survivability with Rhea's Blessing, which gives you that massive shield if you fall below 40% health. 35% magic life steal, getting your health back constantly throughout the game. Um, but that is it, guys. That's Darcy's build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and, and of course, like I've said before, we're going to be coming out with daily videos from now on. Um, so keep an eye out on the Sunbrush channel for all the latest, greatest content, how to build videos, coaching videos, and all the above, guys. Thank you for checking out the video, and as always, until next time.